Coming up on OU Nightly, we have another chance for severe weather. I'm going to have that full breakdown in your forecast. And remembering a football icon, we look back on OJ Simpson's life, plus a war of words in Arizona, the latest on the abortion debate. This is OU Nightly. Hello, and thank you for watching OU Nightly. I'm Melina Samir. And I'm Darian Curry. We'll begin with a look at our forecast because, of course, we have to talk about allergy season. Let's get right over to OU Nightly meteorologist Lauren Brand. Lauren, what do you have for us? Thanks, ladies. Yeah, we've had a pretty breezy day across OU and the Norman campus here. We've been gusting um, around 27 degrees currently, but we actually saw some wind gusts upwards of 38 miles an hour. So it's been a pretty breezy day, but it also we've been been affected by those allergies. Braden Co, our OU nightly meteorologist, is outside on the South Oval. Braden, what can you tell us about those allergies? Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, I'm out here on the South Oval, and it is a beautiful day other than some breezy conditions. You can see behind me, OU Landscaping has been working on planting those mums, so it's gorgeous out here on the South Oval, and you would think that everything would be fine, but for you allergy sufferers, that's not the case. Looking at that allergy index, we've got tree pollen in that very high category, as well as grass in the medium category. So for you allergy sufferers out there, unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to get better anytime soon. I'm going to send it back to you in the studio, Lauren. Thanks, Brayden. We are going to be talking more about those temperature changes that weekend warm up, and I'm going to be talking more about that severe weather that's on the way. Thanks, Lauren. Former NFL running back, movie star, and infamous cultural icon O.J. Simpson has died after a battle with cancer. He was 76. CNN Stephanie Alam has the latest. O.J. Simpson soared to fame as number 32 for the Buffalo Bills. I'm sorry for all of it. And plummeted to infamy as inmate number 1027820 in the Nevada Department of Corrections. In between, Simpson led a life filled with more surreal drama than all of his various film and TV projects combined. O.J., are you a son? Come on, come on. Mass media experts say Simpson's sensational televised low-speed chase, I have OJ in the car. arrest and murder trial, doesn't fit, you must acquit, stand as the first reality show, and perhaps the greatest three-ring television phenomenon ever. At one point, the world heard OJ Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, say, I don't want to stay on the line, I'm going to beat this shit. Wait a minute. Then later, Simpson was charged with the horrific murders by knife of Nicole and her friend Ron Goldman. Ron and Nicole were butchered. The trial made lawyers and even witnesses household names. Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder. When the jury freed Simpson, celebration erupted in parts of Los Angeles. But Simpson would never recapture his idol status. Simpson first sprinted into the national spotlight as the Heisman Trophy winning running back at the University of Southern California. Then 11 spectacular years with the NFL vaulted him to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Simpson cashed in on the popularity, go, OJ, go. becoming a pitchman for Hertz and an actor, becoming well known for the Naked Gun movies. OJ Simpson as you've never seen him before. Simpson played a lawman on screen and ran into trouble with the courts off screen. He lost the multi-million dollar wrongful death suit brought by the families of his ex-wife and Ron Goldman, then moved to Florida. In 2000, Simpson was accused of assault in a road rage incident in Miami. He was found not guilty. In 2005, he was found guilty and fined for stealing satellite television. Then in 2007 in Las Vegas, police arrested him on several felony charges, including kidnapping and armed robbery. In that case, Simpson and armed accomplices raided a hotel room in what he called an attempt to just get back some of his stolen belongings. And I didn't know I was doing anything illegal. I thought I was confronting friends and retrieving my property. The Nevada jury never bought his story and instead sent him to prison. He was released on parole nine years later in the dead of night with no fanfare and no bright future. Just the distinction of arguably 
the greatest rise and fall in pop culture history. Simpson died in his home in Las Vegas and his parents and his family has asked for privacy during this time. Tensions rise in the Middle East after an airstrike that could complicate ongoing negotiations. A Unitely Savannah Simmons has that and the rest of today's national and international headlines from the News Center. A Hamas senior political leader confirms his three sons and four grandchildren were killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza Wednesday. The airstrike was amid fresh efforts in Cairo to bring a temporary halt to months of fighting. The Hamas leader stated that the killing of sons of leaders would only make Hamas, quote, more steadfast in our principles and adherence to our land. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Arizona House of Representatives erupted into chaos last night after Republicans blocked the effort to repeal a near-total abortion ban in the state. This comes after the Arizona Supreme Court decided to keep the law from 1864, which only allows abortions if the mother's life is in jeopardy. President Joe Biden is hosting the first ever leader summit between the United States, Japan and the Philippines. This summit, which is already underway, attempts to draw Pacific allies closer as U.S. tensions rise with China and North Korea. Biden spoke with Japan's prime minister, claiming the U.S.-Japan alliance is, quote, stronger than it's ever been. And the former interpreter of baseball star Shohei Otani was charged with federal bank fraud after allegedly stealing more than $16 million to cover gambling debts. Melina Darian. Thanks, Savannah. On Capitol Hill today, House leaders are priming a new bill to reauthorize the American government's spying powers. Senior political reporter Noah Mack is live in the studio with details. Noah. Well, Melina, the bill would expand the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, for two years. The provision allows the American government to spy on foreign targets. And if Americans are in contact with these targets, acquiring those communications is also protected under this bill. This comes as 19 House Republicans blocked a previous bill yesterday that would have extended FISA to five years. This bill will also offer up a vote to add a warrant requirement to the law something those 19 strays are pushing for. And in other news, one of Oklahoma's representatives just became the first Native American to chair one of the most influential committees in the House. Tom Cole, who represents us here in Norman, was elected to chairman of the House Appropriations Committee. Cole is a member of the Chickasaw Nation. Melina Darian. Thanks, Noah. The second leading cause of death in college athletes. What you should know after the break. And a childhood favorite may no longer be available for school lunches. What it is and why it's happening, coming up. New research shows suicide rates continue to soar with all ages in the U.S. But there is one group with an unexpected rise. OU Knightley's Julia Roberts has the details of that study and more in Health Beat. Yes, Darian, a new study shows that in just two decades, the suicide rate for college athletes has doubled, but researchers can't find the answers on why. Researchers did note that it, was, it is common with those of higher fame and that it could be related to the stress of being in the light and more prone to outside criticism on social media. Male cross-country athletes saw the highest rate of suicide. Mammograms are the best way to find breast cancer sooner, but new study shows women are facing roadblocks in getting that screening. The CDC found that women are less likely to get a mammogram if they had more health-related social needs. The cost of accessing health care was the biggest barrier. Others include food insecurity and lack of transportation. A consumer watchdog group is petitioning to the USDA to keep Lunchables out of school cafeterias because of excessive amounts of salt. According to Consumer Reports, the lunch kits sold at schools have more sodium than the ones sold in stores. And that's not all. The group reports that the kit can contain dangerous chemicals like lead and metal, leading to, the health, problem, leading to health problems in the future. And a new study reveals that Americans between the ages of 12 and 26, also known as Gen Zers, are, least are the least happiest of all groups, saying they are having a harder time than previous generations at their age. Darian Molina. Thanks, Julia. From raining threes to raining dollar bills. 
Find out more about the way student athletes are making money off the field up next. And it's springtime in Oklahoma, so you know what that means. We have another risk of severe weather coming up, and I'm going to have that full breakdown in your full forecast coming up. Well, good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this Thursday evening. We've had a pretty lovely day, clear blue skies ahead of us, and we are sitting around 68 degrees right now. So it has been a pretty lovely day other than those wind gusts, which have been gusting to uh, upwards of 30 miles an hour, even stronger at times. So it's been a pretty gusty day with especially those northerly winds. They bring in a little bit more of some cooler air and that won't stay like that, though. We will be warming up as we go on into the weekend. This is our temperature outlook for April 17th to the 21st. So we have a higher probability of seeing some above average temperatures for here in Oklahoma, specifically for southeastern Oklahoma. Now for your weekend outlook Saturday, we're going to be getting up into those 80s, so it will be a pretty warm weekend ahead of us. We should have pretty clear skies. We will see a cloud or two, but it will be warm and breezy as we go on throughout the day. Now Sunday, we do have a risk for some fire danger as well as Saturday too, but we will be warming up to around 89 degrees, so pushing that 90 degree mark, it will be definitely a warm weekend ahead of us. But for this severe weather risk setup that we have, this is going to be for Monday. Now we do have this is going to be for Friday 7 a.m. Um, but as we move on through, we do have a chance of seeing a dry line that's going to be moving through the area. And this will also help to bring in some moisture down from the Gulf Coast as well, which will definitely set up that severe risk for us here. So this is going to be Sunday at 4 p.m. That moisture will be set in place by that time and that dry line will start to appear then. Now this is going to be Monday 4 p.m. where we could start to see right along that dry line is where we're going to start to see some of those storms start to pop up and then roll through the metro and Oklahoma. Now we're still unsure on those hazards, but we will be making you aware of that, especially as we get closer to that date. Now this is going to be that severe weather outlook, so we are in an enhanced risk for Norman and the OU campus specifically. So this is going to be a level three out of five in terms of the severe weather risk that we could see. Now for those lows tonight, we will be jumping down into those 40s. Not as cold as we have been, but still definitely on the chillier side. Now for Friday, we will be jumping into those upper 70s, so a little bit warmer than what we saw today, um, and that will, trend will continue, especially as we go on into the weekend. Now for your seven day forecast Friday, we're going to have clear skies jumping up into those upper 70s, continuing that trend into Saturday and Sunday. Monday is going to be that severe weather risk, which again, we will be updating you more on that, especially as we go on into the weekend. We will probably have some severe storm coverage with that. So we will be keeping everybody updated with that and those 80s will continue throughout the week. Well, I'm so happy to have some warmer weather this weekend for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. Lauren. Yeah, of course. Thanks, guys. Thank you. As Oklahoma transitions into the SEC, NIL funds are becoming a huge part of the college athletics landscape. CNN's Michael Yoshida has the details. Hi, it's Caitlin. I'm so excited to be partnering with H&R Block. To College athletes. When the odds get beaten, the chicken fingers get eaten, baby. Capitalizing on endorsement deals. My name is Olivia Miles. I'm dropping my t-shirt. It's become a really big part of the game. There's a lot more added pressures, I'd say, you know, to get your business going, to get an agent, um, to build your brand. They're also cashing in on their name, image, and likeness from NIL collectives, operating independent of schools, these pool funds from boosters and other sources. It's basically like negotiating with a, a general manager in the NFL or NBA, um, but at, at the college level. And obviously, the higher the prospect, the more the money. College football is the biggest NIL sport. Every school in the Southeastern Conference or SEC has at least one NIL collective. It's helpful for me. It made my name pop out and come out more. Opportunities continue to expand. New company Nilly pays student athletes up front for their NIL rights and pairs them with a financial advisor. If a kid is able to learn about money, to invest properly, that goes a long way. And allows fans to invest in the athletes. We believe that this is a really good deal for, for all parties. Nilly earns revenue from the athletes' NIL rights and shares it with investors and the athletes who receive a majority of the profit. We didn't have this. 21 years ago when I came out of high school and had to go to the pros because of my financial situation. It's time for the athletes to be able to control their own destiny. I'm Michael Yoshida reporting. 
According to On3.com, here at OU, Jackson Arnold brings the most money in NIL profits on campus. Now, after a Red River runt, OU softball is swinging back into conference play this weekend. That's right. OU Knightley's Emily LaBeth has more in sports. A former Sooner returned to the NBA court last night after missing 23 games. I'll let you know who it is and how he played next in sports. Hi, I'm Emily LaBeth, and it's time for sports. The last time OU softball was in Norman, they were number one in the nation and undefeated in conference play. But now that they're ranked number two and coming off a conference series loss, the Queens of the Diamond want their crown back. The Sooners return to Love's Field tonight to face BYU in their first Big 12 meeting. In their last series against Texas, OU only played at six runs. Look for Jada Coleman and T.R.A. Jennings to pick these Sooner bats up. Coleman is on a 26-game on-base streak, and Jennings is leading the Big 12 in four offensive categories. OU football is gaining momentum on the recruiting trail, picking up a four-star commitment today. Maryland defensive lineman Trent Wilson chose OU over Ohio State, Texas A&M, and Penn State. Wilson is the 13th commit for the Sooner class of 2025 and is listed as a top 10 defensive lineman by On3. And it just means more for OU men's and women's basketball. A new season in a new conference means new facility upgrades. Both teams renovated their suites, locker rooms, team lounges, meeting spaces, and recovery areas. And the men's area includes a spot that highlights former Sooners who went to the NBA. The Masters are not the only golf action you can see this weekend. OU men's golf closes out their regular season tomorrow and Saturday in the Thunderbird Tournament in Arizona making this their final showing before the Big 12 championship. And the Thunder took on a weak Spurs roster last night that was missing four key players. SGA was back like he never left, getting this spin and, getting this spin and score bucket on his way to a 26-point night. Josh Giddy also had a night dropping 20 and grabbing 12 boards for a double-double. Thunder win convincingly by 38 points. And Giddy is proud of his team's approach and execution. But games like that are, are, are tough to play in when a team, they're not really playing for anything. They're loose. They're, they're free. Guys are playing confidently. Um, but those type of games are difficult to play in. And um, I thought from the job, we, we came out with the right mindset, um, not worrying, you know, who the opponent was. Um, extra to the game plan defense. I thought we locked in. They, we held them to 11 in the first quarter. Moving east to Atlanta, making his return to the court from injury last night was Trey Young. Ice Trey was not cooled last night. He shot a perfect 5-for-5 five five from the field and put up 14 points and 11 assists for a double-double. After missing 23 games, Young and the Hawks could not secure the win and were stung by the Hornets 115-114. to Melina, Darian? Thanks, Emily. It's National Pet Day today, Darian. Yes, it is, and I'm excited to celebrate with my little pooch later. And we are next going to talk about how OU Knightley is celebrating. I'm Kamarion Brown with an update on the search for a missing Pottawatomie County teenager. The Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Office confirmed to us today that Hannah Contreras was found safe. The Sheriff's Office first put out the call for help to find the 16-year-old after she was last seen in Shawnee on Tuesday. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. Darian, Melina. Thanks, Kamarion. And it's National Pet Day today, and we are definitely celebrating here at OU Nightly. We do Pet of the Week every Tuesday to showcase available animals at Norman Animal Welfare. And one of our own adopted adorable lady, as you can see here, and giving her a new home. And here's some of our crew's very own furry friends, each of them well-loved and impossibly cute. We hope you're celebrating this possum holiday, and if you're looking for a new pet, there are still plenty available at Norman Animal Welfare. It's so cute to see everyone's pets on the screen today and just celebrating this national holiday. Yes, it is. And now let's get right over to OU Nightly meteorologist Lauren Brand for a last look at our weather. That's right, ladies. I will definitely be celebrating by giving my pooch some kisses later. But as for your Friday to close out the work week, we will be in those upper 70s. We'll be around 78 for that high. It will be a little bit breezy at times, but they will be switching out of the south. So it will be a little bit of a warmer wind. Now for that seven day forecast, we will be going into the weekend with those lower 80s and rising into the upper 80s by the time we hit Sunday. Now Monday is going to be that severe weather day that we could see, but we're going to have more information on that as we get closer. 
Thanks, Lauren, and thank you for watching OU Nightly. I'm Melina Samir. And I'm Darian Curry. Be sure to watch OU Nightly live weekdays at 4.30. Good night.